chapter 9, verse 22. Brother Doug, we done been through chapter 9, I know it. We're going to look at it again for just a minute. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. You want to keep your Bibles open. Today we have several scriptures we want to go to quickly. If you can't keep up with us, if you'll just jot it down and maybe read it later, but the Word of God is powerful. And there's some powerful things in this precious Word tonight, today. I want to speak for just a moment. By faith, the excellent sacrifice, Christ and His cross. Hebrews 9, verse 22. Listen, we talked about this a few weeks ago. And almost all things are, are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. Without shedding of blood is no remission. Now, Pastor Doug, do you, do you believe in what some people call bloody religion? I believe there is no other way whereby man might be saved but at his name. Listen, it was therefore, in verse 23, it was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things himself were better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He's in that heavenly tabernacle. He there took the precious blood, oh hallelujah, which atones for my sins and your sins. He's now in the presence of God for us. Verse 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. As it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. Now flip over with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 where we have got to. Hebrews chapter 11. And we want to go back up to verse 4. Last Sunday we was in verse 6, but we want to go back up. We hadn't forgot verse 4 and 5. Hebrews 11 verse 4. By faith, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. You ought to understand that. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. The devil tries to tell you you're nothing and you're nobody. But you are a child of Almighty God. Not self-righteous, but you stand righteous in him. By your faith in Christ Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. You have every right to enter into the holies of holies and there in the very presence of God make your petitions and your requests known unto God. Because of that faith you can sing, What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. The devil might try to drag them up. He might try to press you down with condemnation, but you send him back where he came from. Oh, hallelujah. You rebuke him and you stand by faith. You are righteous in Christ Jesus. He obtained witness that he was righteous. Listen, God testifying of his gifts, and by he being yet dead, speaketh. Father, touch your words this morning. I pray, God, that this word would speak to our hearts, speak to every heart that is here those who later listen to the different ministries of the church, that your word will go forth and will accomplish. I know that it will and bring to pass the things you send it forth to do in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Now let's skip down to verse 6 again. Now, you might get tired of hearing this, but in the next few weeks, this verse is going to be repeated a lot. Things bear repeating, do they not? 
You see, if we'd catch it the first time, we wouldn't have to be told time and time again, would we? Come on. You men know that, don't you? Your wife's told you. If you'd listen to what I told you, come on. Hey Amen, and, and, and she's right. If I would have listened the first time, there it would be. I told you right what was that, and I'm standing there looking at it, seeing it, and she walks right up and grabs it. And I, 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 it wasn't there before. I don't know if magically there it is. Come on, if we would listen. So you're going to hear these things repeated a lot. We need to get it down in our heart. These things need to get down in our mind and down in our heart. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, faith, not works, faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. We can't even believe that God is without faith. Listen. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. We must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him by faith. When we truly believe in Him as the very Lamb of God and the Son of God, then we allow the Holy Ghost of God to come into our hearts and come into our lives and make us a new creature, Brother R.J. Those old desires, those old things, those old paths that we once desired, we no longer desire. We want to lie in His pastures. We want, oh hallelujah, we want to know what His Spirit would lead us and would guide us. So by Faith in Him, He changes us and He makes us that new creature in Christ Jesus. Now I read to you here just a few moments ago about a man by the name of Abel. We'll go back for just a moment if you want to to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. You know the story very well of creation. You've heard it since you were just small. But I want to remind us again about and what the Word of God is showing us by faith, Abel. Now I want us to also notice as we're going through Hebrews chapter 11, it always will start that verse, by faith. That needs to get down in your heart. That needs to get down in your soul. By faith. By faith in God. By faith, Abel. Alright, so we see the first example here. Listen, verse 3. In the process of time, came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. We have here in this chapter the first example of a religious man. Religious man of the world. And we're going to see a genuine man of faith. Now religion, <coughs> many preachers won't tell you this, but religion is the most deadly thing there is in the world. Many men, many murders, many awful things have happened at the altar of religion. If you don't believe me, read history. People say, oh, if Christ was such a loving God, why would these things have happened? Why would it have happened in the name of religion? Because religion is man. Religion is man's way, not God's way. God's way is by faith. God's way is by believing in the sacrifice that He has provided. So now Cain knew, listen, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. He was a farmer. He was a man that farmed. Nothing wrong with vegetables. I love them. Nothing wrong with fruits. I love them. But that's not what God asked for. God asked for a blood sacrifice to cover sins. Listen, verse 4. And Abel, the man who believed in God, the man who had real faith, and Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see, this was a just God's demand. That without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Without the shedding of blood, sin cannot be remitted. You see, this was a just God demand. Blood sacrifice of an innocent lamb was what God desired to forgive sins. Now, this was not the first time. They knew about this. In the Garden of Eden, you remember? You remember when God came down? He came down and He walked with Adam and He walked with Eve. 
And did you notice that? Adam and Eve. Can I throw that in right quick? Won't cost a dime extra. It wasn't Adam and Steve. Amen? Come on. It was Adam and Eve. God created it that way. Man wants to change it all around and say it's normal. And it's the working of God. God has nothing, nothing to do with it. Don't you love them, Brother Doug? Sure I do. Sure I do. I would love to be able to reach each one of them and tell them of the love of Jesus Christ, how He can change their heart and how He can change their life, how He can make them a new creature in Christ Jesus, how He can give them life and life more abundantly. But many of their hearts are now hardened. Read it in Romans chapter 1. They went all the way down till they no longer recognize nor want anything to do with the things of God. They have made themselves gods. Amen. And they think that they can make their own laws and their own way. And it will not work. It ain't cost you a dime. Just threw that in there extra. Adam and Eve was there in the garden and God had made all things perfect. All things wonderful. Can you just imagine how it was in the cool of the day in that beautiful garden that God had created? How everything, how beautiful it was and God would come down and there He would walk with man would have fellowship with man, and man would talk with him, and there was no sin. There was no anger. There was no bitterness. There was no grief. There was no sorrow. Everything was perfect. Brother David, God said, I made all these things, and all these things were good and were right. But on that particular day when he came down, he knew sin had destroyed it all. That sin had bring horror. That sin had brought disaster. That sin had came. That man might be separated from God. Adam and Eve had hid themselves. They never needed to hide themselves from God before. They never knowed anything in their life that was wrong. They simply walked by faith in God, believing God, knowing He would come down in the cool of the day, knowing He had created all things and He'd put them over all things. But now sin and self-will had entered in. And God comes down and He cries out for them. Aren't you glad when we fail God, He seeks us out? Aren't you glad that still when people shake their fist in His face as it were and say there is no God, He desires and seeks those individuals out that they would turn their heart and their life over to Him because He loves them so much. Came down in the cool of the day and He called for them. Called for them. And Adam said, Here we are, Lord. We have hid ourselves. God knew why they had hid themselves. He knew these things. And He said, Why have you hid yourselves? Because we have, we're naked. We, we know these things now. We know all these things. And we've hid ourselves. And that day, God, He didn't take leaves. Come on. He didn't weave together leaves, but He took skins. To take skin, something had to die, didn't it? The lambs there that day gave their life that there might be a covering for sin. Aren't you thankful there's a covering for sin? Aren't you thankful that the blood of Jesus Christ, see it washes sin away? I'm glad not, do you see the law only covered sin, but I'm thankful brother David, the blood of Jesus Christ not only covers it, but it eradicates it, it washes it, it cleanses it, oh hallelujah, it justifies it and it takes me from my life, making me new in Christ Jesus this was a just God's demand brother Doug, do you understand it? no, I don't understand it all I don't know all the things about God He's God he, he, is, he, he, he is so far beyond. When you look, just look at the hand. Just, just go Google it sometime, all you Googlers. Google it sometime about how that hand is made. It is beyond our thinking. It's beyond my imagination how wonderful creation the hand is. Our feet, all, all the things that God created is beyond my thinking. It's beyond my understanding. I don't understand all the things of God, but by faith I believe Him. By, oh, hallelujah. By faith I know. By faith I know He's told me. God says it, and I believe it so. Amen. And I, I go by faith in him. So blood was shed down in the garden and they knew what a blood sacrifice was. You see, by this, by this sacrifice that Abel brought, 
He shows he recognized his need of a redeemer. There's no way that I can pay or could have paid for my sins. I was born into this world a sinner. Without hope. No way could I cleanse myself. I've told you many times, you can't take something that's dirty and clean something that's dirty. It won't work. You, and, and you see that I, I, was, I was dirty in sin. I could not clean myself. I could not do away with sin. Oh, I could try to do righteous acts. I could try to do righteous deeds. I could make up a list of rules religiously that I need to follow. All these things would be good, but it would not save me nor change me. Only faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord. So Abel recognized that he needed a redeemer. You see, this offering that Abel brought was a type of Christ. The Lord had respect. And he accepted it. He received the offering of Abel. Let me tell you, when the Holy Ghost of God begins to convict your heart, and you realize that you're a sinner, you realize that you're lost. Hear me this morning. You realize that you're lost and you're undone without God. You realize that if you stood before God today, you have nothing to plead. You have no, nothing to say why that you should be able to enter into His heaven. Do you, and then when you realize that, if you realize by faith, oh hallelujah, by faith in what Christ done upon His cross, that you are accepted of God. That that accepting the sacrifice of Christ Jesus makes you acceptable unto God. Isn't that a wonderful thing that when you stand before God one day, Brother Liar, He's not going to look at my faults, my failures, and all my shortcomings. I know men do. You can probably numerize them and write them down. But I'm so thankful. Oh, hallelujah. On that day, God is going to see the blood. He's going to see the faith that I have in the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. And He's going to say, there's my son. Enter in. Oh, hallelujah. You've been faithful over a few things and I'm going to make you ruler over many. You see, the Lord had respect unto Abel. Abel's offering to God was beautiful. To man, it was foolish. Men laugh at Christianity. Men laugh at Christianity. Men have rejected Christianity. Men despise true Christianity. Oh, they'll accept religion. They don't like it, but they'll accept it. But they don't want someone who is truly a child of Almighty God, who believes in His Word, who stands by His Word, and who lives that life. Man thinks this way is a foolish way and a wrong way. They can't understand it, so they reject it and turn it aside. To man, Cain's offering was beautiful. To man, Cain's offering should be accepted. But to God, God rejected it because it was not what God had said must be. Then in verse 5 of this same chapter 4, and I'm going to try to hurry this morning. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. Listen, and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Here we see that Cain... Because God had no respect of man's way. You see, it must be Christ and Him crucified. There must be shed in the blood. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, again, if you can't get there quick, I've got it marked. You write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 says this, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolish, foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. To man it is foolish, to God it is His wisdom. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. You see, Christ, the power of God... Christ, the power of God. Now I mentioned Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Many people in this world don't want to read this chapter. They need to read this chapter time and time and time again. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed. Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus anymore? 
because men reject it, because men laugh at it, because men ridicule it, because men put it down. Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? He said, I'm not ashamed, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith, not by works, but by faith, by believing in God. Then that power, the Holy Spirit of God, has every right to come into your heart and to come into your life and to change you and make you that new creature. You see, the wisdom of God was that sin could be pardoned. Aren't you glad He pardoned my sins? Aren't you glad with a songwriter you can stand and sing, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. When the old devil goes fishing in that sea, I can say, hey, wait just a minute. God put up a sign, no fishing. you got to leave that alone. Those sins are gone. Oh, hallelujah. Those sins are gone. Those sins are forgotten. Those sins have been washed away. I'll never have to face them ever again because they are covered, they are washed, they are clean because because sin has been pardoned. But not only has sin been pardoned, but God's justice, God's justice has been met. And now I stand before God justified. I'm no longer guilty. Oh, hallelujah. You know that old guilty feeling? You know that old feeling of sin in your life? That old guilty feeling of how horrible and how bad you've done and been? That's gone. Glory be to God. Because I stand now pardoned. God's justice has been met and I stand justified just as if I had never sinned. You see the cross. Many people try to say that the cross was a defeat. But the cross was the greatest victory that there ever was. He went on with this same thought in the next chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 2, and he said this, For I am determined... Oh, we need a determination, church. We need a determination. We need a determined spirit. I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Don't come to me trying to tell me i got to live by the law. I don't want to hear it. Don't come to me telling me of another Jesus. I don't want to hear it. Don't come to me saying there's an easier way or there's a better way. There is no other way but by faith in Christ Jesus my Lord. I am determined that I'm going to believe this book just like it says. He's changed my life. He's made me that new creature. He's led me. His grace has brought me to where I'm at today. And by that continuous grace that I know, I'll be there every moment that I need it. He's going to lead me home. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these days. I've got to hurry. All right, flip back with me to Genesis chapter 4 if you want to. If you can get there quick. Genesis chapter 4. And then verse 6. Listen. The Lord said unto Cain, Why are thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Listen. If thou doest well, shall, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Mark that. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You see, that which brought Cain, Pete, brought Abel peace. The sacrifice that he brought, it brought him peace. He knew he was in right standing with God. A peace that passeth understanding. To know that you are saved and in right standing with God. Oh, what a peace. Though the world might be tossing and turning all about, yet you know you're in the hand of Almighty God. What, how blessed we Christians are. How blessed we are that are children of God. Abel had that peace. And the same words that filled Abel with peace, it filled Cain with anger and hate. Do you realize the hate that's in this world today? I mean the hate. You can't disagree without them. You can't say, hey, wait just a minute. I don't really go along with that. And they hate you. They despise you. That hate. You see, that started all the way back there with Cain. That anger and that hate because against the things of God. God's truth still brings that same spirit to man. And they hate. 
despise the things of God. They try to shut down the things of God. But I want to remind them and I want to remind you that the gates of hell shall never, glory be to God, shall never prevail against God's church. Listen. You'll be accepted if by the right way you come by faith. Listen to what he said right here. And I read this, and one time when I read it, I, I thought, well, I'm understanding what he's saying. But then I started digging down into it. Sin, life at the door. If you go into the Hebrew, and I'm no Hebrew scholar. If you stood up and spoke Hebrew, I couldn't tell you what you were speaking. But if you go back into what this word is actually saying, it is saying the sin offering is at the door. The offering's there for you. You see what I'm saying? The offering's there for you. I wonder even in my mind, you had to forgive me, I have a vivid imagination. I wonder even when God was speaking to Cain and telling him, if you just sacrifice the right way, I'll accept you. If you come the right way, I wonder if he could not hear the bleeding of the sheep right outside the door. It's right there. It's at the door. The sin offering's there. Glory to God. It's right there. All you got to do is reach out and accept it. All you got to do is reach out and and receive it. All you got to do is reach out and believe it. It's there for you. It's not hard. It's not difficult. Just walk outside the door and there is the sacrifice and there is the offering. Today, the same thing. He says, by faith, just reach out. You don't have to be in a house of God. You, you don't have to be in a certain place. You don't have to have a priest. You don't have to have anybody else. You can just, by faith in Jesus Christ, believe in Him and receive. Glory to God. You see, without faith, there is no hope. Be flipping over with me to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. I'm going to hush. I want to read this, but I, I just, the Lord has brought to my mind, it is by faith. There was a man, I won't call his name. Some here know him, others maybe who would be listening knows him, and I won't call his name. But he was lost. Came to church, he is lost. Believed God, knew God was real, he was lost. He would be gone. He would be gone for weeks sometimes. Nobody know where he was at. Gone on a drunk. You'd have never known he was a drunk. I didn't know it until after and, and, and I began to hear the, the, the things. You'd never know it. But he was away from God. Do you think he had to come down and beg and plead? I'll never forget the Sunday that he got saved, got things right with God. Now I want you to understand, I want you to hear every word I'm saying. Don't you leave here and say I said something I didn't. Thank God it's been recorded. That particular Sunday, I had gave altar call after altar call. But that particular Sunday, for some reason, and I very seldom do it, but I'd ask for members to join the church that wanted to. Now, joining this church will not save your soul. You hear me. It won't do it. Being baptized won't save you. It is by faith. And I felt the Spirit of God so strong that morning. But nobody had come to the altar time, and I just felt like I need to ask people to join the church. I'll never forget it. I can see that white head now as he stands up. Tears. And I believe by the time he left that chair and by the time he got right here, his name. Come on. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. You can believe with me or not. I believe his name was being written down in the Lamb's book of life. I could tell by the time he got there and I got down in front of him because I thought, well now, you know, I'm not sure that he... I could tell the countenance, the change. You don't have to come down and beg and plead. You've got to believe. 
Oh, yeah, you're going to feel it. He felt it. Believe me, he felt it. Never one, one more time did he drink. Never one more time was he gone. Faithful, true. If I told you who he was, he'd shock you to death. Faithful and true to the church. Loved the church. Loved God. But from the time, I believe even when he got up and started down, he is saved. We try to complicate the things of God. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? We try to say, oh, you've got to say a certain prayer. You've got to say a certain sinner's prayer. And people began believing in that prayer more than they, than they believe in Christ Jesus. And what He done, it's not what I, it is by receiving, by faith saying, I realize you are the only way. You are my only hope. And Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm going to read and I'm going to hush. Galatians chapter 6. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, how I love you this morning. Listen, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the Lord is crucified unto me and I unto the world. You see, it is by faith. It is by faith that I have believed in what Christ done. There was no price that I could pay. There was nothing that I could do in and of myself but believe what God had done for me. Man says it's foolish. Man says it's crazy. Man says we don't understand it. But God says that's the only way. You know what I love about the cross, Brother Buddy? Is that ground. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. That ground is level. I don't care if you're the richest man in the world. I don't care if you're the most powerful man in the world or if you're the drunk down in the gutter. When you, Glory to God. Mm, my, I feel the Holy Ghost. When you stand at the foot of that cross, that ground is level. Franklin Graham, I love him to death, Sister Terry. You work for him. But he stands no taller than me or you at the cross. I think about a pastor right now, Larry Adams, that was in my presence this week. And every time I get around him, I just about bawl. Every time. I started telling him, today I'm not going to do this right here if you get me crying. (laughs) As much as he's done for the Lord and, and all that God's used him and how God has blessed him, he stands no taller than I do. It is by faith. At the foot of the cross, Father. Oh, Holy Ghost of God. By simple faith. Can we stand for just a moment? Lord, as our bulletin said this morning and I believe it was anointed of God search me O oh God know me search us all today God and let us realize it's only by faith I pray Lord if there's one here Lord some that maybe have faltered back from following you as close as they should or some that have not by faith believed in you here today or later listening, that your Spirit will touch them. Oh, that the Holy Ghost, I feel the sweet, drawn Spirit of God. That the Holy Ghost of God will touch, Lord. Not condemnation, but conviction will be in their heart and in their life that you love them this morning and you desire them by faith to believe. Heads bowed, eyes closed for just a moment. I'm not going to hold long this morning.